As a duly designated representative of the city, county, and state of New York, I order you to cease any and all supernatural activity and return forthwith to your place of origin or to the nearest convenient parallel dimension. That ought to do it. Thanks very much, Ray. something ready let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown shop and obviously as the title of this video should tell you in that opening which I hope you guys enjoyed because that was a pain in the ass to edit uh, we're gonna be starting our proton back build uh, from Ghostbusters now why am I doing this well Ghostbusters is probably in my top three favorite movies of all time um, the second one isn't as good as the first but I do like them both and um, they the new movie that's coming out the new reboot um, that's coming out, should be released in 2016, I believe, it was actually filmed here in Boston. And um, I was at work one day, and I was driving through Chinatown, which is where they were filming, and I happened to see the new Ectomobile, and it's a little bit different than the original. Um, and also, uh, IFC, I believe, on cable, has pretty much been playing Ghostbusters 1 and 2 nonstop. Um, I've always wanted to build these ones uh, ever since like my late teens and early 20s. I just never got around to being able to do it. And uh, after watching the movies probably like five times, um, I figured what the hell we're going to make one. Now, I'm going to try to be as accurate to the first movie as I can. There are going to be some, um, there are some subtle differences between uh, each pack that each actor wore. And there are also some differences between the packs from the second movie to the first movie. Um, some of the differences, I, I, I'm not going to be able to get a 100% amazingly, awesomely accurate uh, Ghostbusters 1 pack because there are a few parts that go to it, that go on there, that um, are really, really hard to come by. And, and I'll go through that real quick. And um, now, the, for the movies, they use three types of packs. They use the hero pack, which is the all-lighted one um, and the one that you see whenever they have a close-up. Um, of the packs, of the actors wearing the packs. Um, that's what I'm going to build. They also had what was called a, um, uh, a semi-hero pack, which they used in the second movie. And um, that was just a vacuum shell. They did that to save weight because a lot of the actors complained that the packs were too heavy. Um, so the long distance shots um, that still needed a decent amount of detail, they used those in the second movie and second movie only as far as I can tell. And um, the third thing is a uh, stunt pack. And the stunt packs were used whenever the actors were uh, getting thrown around. I had to do something really physical. And those were just uh, molded foam rubber. Um, they were obviously squishy. Um, case in point, on the first movie where uh, Bill Murray uh, gets slimed in the hotel and he's on his back, um, that is a stunt pack, obviously, because they didn't want him to destroy a real pack, be lying down on it. That's a, that's a stunt pack. Um, so we're going to be doing the hero pack, full light kit, full everything. And I'm going to try to do as much of this myself as I can. You can buy kits for these online. Um, they're relatively expensive, probably a full kit for a full build out, will probably run you around 800 bucks with all the electronics. Um, you can piece them out, like the shell will probably run you $300. Um, I toyed around with buying the shell. Uh, the only problem with it is they're, uh, they're vacuum foam poles and I don't know, I, I'd be buying them off of eBay and I'm not quite sure what the quality would be. So we decided to go uh, with our own. Now the original ones were um, molded fiberglass. They came out of a mold and they were all fiberglass. 
that is way beyond my skill set. Uh, and I'm not even going to attempt to go that route. But I do need it to be light because I want to wear it. So my plan is to use wherever I can pink rigid insulation foam. Now this is the uh, Owens Corning one, the pink one from Home Depot. The reason is, is this has a lot better uh, surface finish than the blue one from Lowe's does. And I got a two inch one, um, two inch thick and a three quarter inch thick. Uh, so we'll be gluing them together and laminating them where we need to. And um, for the little detail pots, I'm gonna be using some um, birchwood ply that you can get at a hobby store. I can use some, um, some basswood or something like that or um, as Europeans call it, lime, lime wood. You can use that. Um, or balsa or something like that. Now, I said I wanted to be as light as possible, so which is why I'm using this uh, rigid foam, and I'll be able to haul this out to put the electronics in. The only problem is, is it's relatively, I mean, you can ding it and dent it. Um, so we're actually gonna harden this a little bit. And as far as I can tell, I did some research on it. Um, there are some very expensive products out there that'll cost you hundreds of dollars that is meant to go over this and create a hard shell. Um, I'm trying to keep the cost down on this, so we're not going to go crazy with that. Uh, but a lot of people suggested using um, polyester um, resin for fiberglassing without the fiberglass strips. You can put the fiberglass strips if you want it, but again, like I said, I, I know nothing about that. I don't even want to get into that. But if you put the fiberglass resin on there, that should harden and give you a decent impact surface. Now, I'm not planning on bashing this thing around and throwing it around everywhere, but I do want to protect against everyday uh, you know, dings and everything else like, like that. Um, if any of you out there have a better idea or have done this before, absolutely let me know. Um, I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants. It's the first time I've ever done anything like this, so we'll see how this goes. And we're probably going to have to do a little bit of machining here and there. And I am going to have probably end up buying some specific parts that are kind of hard to, to make. And um, if I can find some of the actual fittings that they used, I'm going to, I'm going to do that too. So now let's start with the basic parts of this. Um, if you look down in the comments, um, there is a website there that has all of the, um, the information that I'm going to be using here. It has all these plans. As far as I can tell, these are the most accurate plans they have around and the ones I'm going to be going by. Obviously, I'm going to be adding in pictures with this. Now, this is a prop. Prop making, um, if it, sometimes they're a little rough. If you look at pictures of the actual screen use packs from far away, they look beautiful. Up close, they look like crap. Um, that's just the way they were meant. They are meant to be seen from a long distance. And, uh, you know, they're meant to be a one-off thing. So they're trying not to spend a mega, mega, mega money and mega time on building this prop. They want to get the appearance and the idea across. So a lot of it is off-the-shelf things. A lot of it is um, uh, molding, uh, uh, molds and stuff that they make so they can cast multiples. Um, but you, you, can, you can tell, like, if you see an actual shot of the actual original screen used ones, and there are some, I think Sony Pictures has them, at one of their uh, uh, their buildings in a case, you can see that they're a little rough around the edges. Um, also, the other good thing about this is, is this is Ghostbusters we're talking about. Um, next to maybe Star Wars, the props in this movie are probably the most documented. I mean, we're not trying to build, say, something from a, an obscure movie, like, we're not trying to build the overthruster from Buckaroo Banzai. If any of you know what that movie is, I'll be surprised. Um, so we're going to start with the basics and, there, and go from there. So we're going to start, let me just move the camera around a little bit uh, and we'll start with the bottom up of how we're going to go through this and some of the parts that I've had to buy so far. Okay, so again, um, the plans I'm using are going to be on the website listed below. There are also a lot more plans on that website. Uh, the specific ones I'm going to be going, I, I have some... Um, reference pictures over here and I also printed them out full size which we'll go through that. Now um, first things first is the pack itself is the shoulder straps in the frame. 
Now, what they used was this. And this is actually what they used in the movies. And what this is, is an Alice Pack frame. This is a um, Vietnam War era um, military uh, pack frame. And in the first movie, there are two versions of this. In the first movie, they used um, what was called an LC-1 frame. Um, and the difference between that and an LC-2 is very minuscule. In, in the second movie, they used an LC-2 frame. Now, these frames are all of drab. In the movie, they were flat black, so you're going to have to paint them. Now, the LC-1 frame is very rare, um, and you'll be paying through the nose to try to get your hands on one, unless you find one at some Army-Navy store. Um, there are knockoffs, Chinese knockoffs, but I hear they're not as good. The, the, uh, the aluminum uh, used to build them isn't as thick. So the biggest difference between LC-1 and LC-2, and the easiest way to tell them apart besides the color of the black frame and all drab frame, is this center bar right here. On an LC-1 frame, which is what the Ghostbusters 1 um, packs used, this, you can see the offset in this. This bar is flat against this outside edge. That's the main difference. The other difference is, is the kidney pads here are a little bit thinner and these shoulder straps are a little bit different. Other than that, there's pretty much no difference between them. So we're actually, these are easy to get. You can get them for probably from 30 to 40 bucks. Uh, an LC1 pack frame, I, I only saw one on eBay and they wanted about 175 to 200 dollars for that. So big difference in price. So we went with this, I think with shipping, from eBay, this cost me around, just around 30 bucks, uh, 30 or 32. So this is what everything is actually gonna attach to here. And we'll have to address this offset by either using standoffs or maybe redrilling these pop rivets and pushing this bracket back and re it in place. I haven't necessarily decided. And we'll also have to paint it flat black. Now, the second part of this build, which is what we're going to be cutting and building today, will be this. This is called the motherboard. And what this was, was just an eighth inch thick piece of aluminum cut out in that form there. And that is what everything else bolted onto. If you actually look at an actual picture of the Proton Pack, which we got here, everything is basically sub-assemblies. So you have a round piece here, another round piece on top of that. You have a tube with a square piece at the bottom, another square piece here, and a couple of round pieces here and here. Everything is built into sub-assemblies and then bolted to that motherboard. Now. I'm not using eighth inch aluminum because A of cost, B of actually getting an eighth inch piece of aluminum, and C of actually cutting it out. I have no means of actually cutting it out relatively accurately to that um, without it being a pain in the ass. I mean, I'm sure you can use a jigsaw and do it, but it'd be a pain. So what we're substituting in its place is a piece of, piece of eighth inch oak plywood. And uh, what we're gonna do with this is we'll seal the grain and then we'll paint it and you won't be able to tell it's wood at all. And this is gonna be the basis that everything is gonna screw on to. The other thing I'm hoping to get done today and in this video is these other two pieces. Synchronous generator. Now, all these parts I believe are fan named. Um, and this is basically underneath the blinky lights, the largest round, and then this socket here. So you're looking at this piece right there. And that is gonna be out of that pink rigid foam. And then the third piece that I'm tr gonna try to get done today, or at least marked out, is the cyclotron, which is the round pot with the blinky red lights. And all this is, is a nine inch kick pan. The only difference between this and what's on there is the edge here. The edge uh, on the plans is half inch thick by half inch out. This is three eighths by three eighths. So we can just make ourselves a uh, 
just a, a larger rim, but otherwise uh, measurements are exactly the same for this and it's already hollow, so it'll be able to put all the electronics in it, which I may need some help from you guys later on. So, um, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to cut out um, my full size plans I printed out and we are gonna pop it onto um, this oak ply here and we're gonna start cutting that out and then we're also gonna um, I believe the thickness of this is the main thickness here is how thick is that two and three quarter inches so I got a two inch piece and a three quarter inch piece and we're gonna spray glue and laminate those together and then all these little pieces on the outside all those will be cut out of um, eighth inch birch ply and then glued to the outside of that. And that's how we're gonna go about this. These here will probably be um, smaller pieces of that rigid foam or maybe even a piece of PVC um, just covered with something, or with, with a piece of rigid foam inside of it, just to make it perfectly round and easier. Um, all right, so let's start taping some things to some boards and uh, see what we can do. Okay, just one thing I need to show you is these are the exact same plans that I just showed you, but they're blown up to, um, to the correct size. Now, the way I did this was I used the Acrobat reader that's always, uh, that it reads PDF files um, that's built into Windows. And I basically just resize, you click on the print button, you click down and you'll see a little picture, it looks like poster, it says poster. You click that and then um, scroll down a little bit more and you'll see uh, size. And I blew this up. Now it took me a lot of trial and error. And this is, I, I was able to get this to be, um, it's a 16th inch off from the actual measurement. Uh, and this one is dead on. Um, this one I had to blow up to 500%. And this one I had to blow up to 250%. And uh, I printed them out using the poster thing and basically what it does is it tiles itself. So you, it prints on multiple pieces of paper. And these are 13 by 19 sheets of paper which is the largest sheet of paper that my printer can take. And then I uh, just put it together and taped it up. So I'm gonna cut this out and we'll be able to stick it directly to our plywood to cut it out. And this one will be able to stick directly to our foam board to cut it out. Um, if there's any confusion in this, or if somebody wants to see the exact way that I did this, on the next video I can, uh, I can, I can actually do a video of me doing it on the computer and how I actually um, kind of came up with this. So, let me know. Okay, so I got this glued down and we glued it with some uh, spray glue. And this is the same stuff that I used to glue the um, felt down in my Gerstmann toolbox. So we're just going to confirm some measurements here. And that's why I printed out one of these. So uh, 14 and an eighth. So from here to here should be 14 and an eighth. And we're 14 and a quarter, so we're an eighth inch big. And from here to here, uh, 25.896. So this is shade over, what is that? Uh, 25 and 7 eighths. So we're just under 26. So we're about an eighth inch off on our measurements, which is perfectly fine because we're bigger which is what I want, so that way I can just, uh, this is going to have to be sanded and everything anyway. Um, so I can just cut right out to these out, this outside line and know that I'm, uh, I'm going to be okay. And then I can just um, sand off the extra to meet the, um, the other foam piece over here. Because the only critical thing really is meeting uh, this circular piece here. The other pieces, you have plenty of room to fudge and move it around. Um, the only critical piece is this is this uh, radius right here. So uh, we're good to go. So I'm going to set up a jigsaw and uh, we'll start cutting this. Okay, so um, I'm going to start cutting this out with the jigsaw. 
I got a clean cut blade in there. Um, they were also extra clean uh, that Bosch makes. This jigsaw is actually brand new. Haven't even used it yet. It's uh, Bosch JS470E. Um, I asked a friend, he recommended this to me. So I'm gonna see how this works. So I'm just gonna cut right through this. Uh, get the bulk of the waste off here. And we're gonna see how this works. Uh, if it starts to have a lot of chip out, I do have some laminate blades in there that have um, that cut on the downstroke. Um, but we should be able to go with this. I have the uh, Nonmar plate in there just so I don't it won't catch and tear the paper. And I also have the zero clearance guard in there. Um, and I just darken that line in with a uh, felt tip pen so I can actually see it. So let's get going here. So that cut with no chip out at all. Okay. So take the bulk of the waste off of this side here too. There it is. It's not too bad. I think actually this should come up a little more. Somewhere in that neighborhood, I believe. Just like that. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure these two holes here are for this bracket at the bottom, and these are attachment points for the rest of it. So, pretty sure we're looking. Somewhere in that vicinity. Not bad. Alright, let's cut some foam and see how we do with that.
Okay, so we got this tacked to our uh, foam board, and I was just doing a little bit of an experiment. <clears throat> and I got one of these knives here, and it'll go all the way through, but I gotta do it in layers. And once you get down, it kinda, you can see it kinda hacks the foam. Um, this is a fine hacksaw blade, and it hacks the foam pretty good, but it cuts relatively. Um, relatively straight and the good thing is is you can see that rough surface there this is some um, 180 grit sandpaper a few swipes of that and that comes right off um, so I can cut on the outside of this and kinda get it down with this um, that seems to be the best way to go so far. I realize that they do make uh, hot wire foam cutters. I don't want to have to go out and buy an extra tool, so we are um, actually going to use this method. I'm going to actually see if I have another hacksaw blade that's a little bit stiffer. I think I do have one floating around here. And we'll just go on the outside of this and cut this all out. Now I use the same spray glue uh, as I can. <clears throat> 3M um, Super 77 multi-purpose adhesive and um, I use this because it will dry there are a lot of glues to glue the styrofoam together um, a lot of them take a long time to dry and a lot of times the center will stay wet and it will just dry on the outside also, the other thing is, is you'll have a hard spot to try to sand through. It was going to be pain in the ass. This stuff is pretty strong. I mean, I can still separate it if I really, really pull, but there's no way I'm going to be pulling that hard on it. Um, and also, once we're done with the hardening process, that'll help seal the outside of it. And that sucker ain't coming apart. Um, so, let me set up a little bit uh, better here, and we'll start cutting this out. Okay, so that uh, utterly failed, and my failure was pretty much right here. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but um, I don't know how to make that kind of show up, so you can see what I'm seeing. But basically, it it's it's really really. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. You see that? That kind of screwed myself up. So this is no good. So take two is going to be, um, maybe we'll look up and figure out how to make myself a little hot wire cutter. Um, didn't want to have to do that, but maybe we're going to have to do that. So we're going to negate the foam for right now, and we're going to go to our pie pan and lay out our holes for our lenses. Okay, so now we're gonna mark out, since we can't uh, get our other piece done in the form, we're gonna mark out a pie pan here for our holes. Well, first, we're just gonna find center. I don't know if you guys can see that. We're going to center line there. And we need a 90 degree center line from there. So what we're going to do is just take our little machina square. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Looks really nice, and whoops, and you can see that one a little bit better. We got one there, make this one a little bit deeper. There we go, 
so we got cross there. <clears throat> And what we want is two inches from here. All this is going to get sanded off when we paint it because the paint isn't going to want to stick to this non stick surface. So I'm not worried about any little whoopses we got going here. Gotta add an extra carbide tip in there, I guess I don't. Okay, so we're two inches off the center line on either side, and we want to be from here to here, two inches up. Trying to negate the shadows from the light there. Two inches. Two inches. So here and here is one set. Now these other ones here are different spacing. We're an inch and a half from this center point. And we are 1.563 from this line. One point five six 
five and a half. All right, about there. Here, 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 and here. My holes, and you get a center punch. All right, so I just checked out my van, and the hole saw I have is dull as crap. So I'll get a nice new sharp one for this, so we're not chewing, chewing up the metal here. But um, you know, you get the gist of what we're doing. We have um, basically a nice little flange here, which I could probably make out of a piece of aluminum. Um, I have some three-inch aluminum here, I think around in the shop I can probably cut a couple of discs off and uh, use that for this um, it's a possibility I could get washers to do it um, I don't think the washers are gonna be eighth inch thick but uh, if worse comes to worse we can probably do that so we know what we got to do now and uh, I'm gonna stop for now um, and I'm gonna hunt up some plans for some sort of homemade hot wire cutter and uh, you know that'll be another project we can make to make a project project to make a project so um, that's kind of it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you on the next one